Sometimes people say to us, or think it, we get it, we hear you anyway, and it goes like this, Abraham, you're making us schizophrenic. Because in one minute, you tell us to be a deliberate creator, set goals, think about what you want, segment attend, be deliberate. And in the next minute, you say, let it go, chill, be in a state of allowing. What do you want us to do? And we say, we want you to know the moment you're in. We want you to know if this is the time to turn up the juice or if this is the time to turn the juice down. We want you to know, if you don't feel good, don't keep focusing on what doesn't feel good. If you do feel good, do keep focusing on what does feel good. Doesn't that make sense to you? Don't you know by the way you feel? Haven't you watched enough movies to know that when it starts going bad, it's going to get real bad? <laughs> You've been rooting for the bad guy because you liked him best anyway. He seemed free and he was cute and he had the best lines and so you were really rooting for him and then he got himself in a box canyon and you know it's not going to end well. He's going to either have to drive off the cliff, Thelma and Louise, or the Sundance Kid. He's going to, if you've seen all of those, you're really rooting, you want them to get away, but you know their point of attraction is such, there's no way out of this. It doesn't get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and then stunningly, shockingly, better. It goes the way it's trending. Everything goes the way it's trending. You just want to get the trend going better earlier if you can. And it doesn't matter how badly it seems to be trending. If you take a beat, take a breath, take a nap, take a swim, spend a little bit of time in meditation, change the subject, distract yourself. You can change the way something trends much more easily than you realize. And then, once you can feel that it is feeling better, then focus. We really want you to hear this. It will make you more likely to give yourself a break. What your point of attraction is in any moment in time just is. It is. It doesn't matter how you gathered those marbles up or when you gathered those marbles up. The only thing that matters is that you've got this point of attraction, which is demonstrating to you what it means. It's bringing to you these relationships. It's bringing to you these memories. It's bringing to you these experiences. It's bringing to you this. And so once you accept that, that you have this point of attraction and that you can, maybe not right now this red hot minute because momentum is a real thing, but you can change what your point of attraction is to mimic more of what you want so you do it gradually and then you deliberately segment intend or you deliberately do a focus wheel or you deliberately put some marbles in your bag and then you notice what comes in response to that as you connect those dots now you've got it now you've got it so here you are living your life and a whole bunch of other people are too and if you're reacting to each other or wanting to elicit responses from each other Oh, you've got such a chaotic mixed bag of what you're getting. But once you've figured it out, who you are, extension of source energy, who you are, seen and known and understood and adored by source energy, who you are, a creator who has explored and decided and put stuff in this vibrational reality, and just like the seed in the ground, it is in the process of becoming. And if you can be an advocate for what you are asking for, rather than a commentator on what you've got so far, oh, it's what getting out ahead of it is, it's what looking forward is, it's what staying out of your own way is, it's what the true value of focus is. So what we're asking you to focus is not your thought or your energy or your vibration or these things that you really need a meter to even understand. We're asking you to focus your emotion. We're asking you to focus the way you feel to something that feels good as often as you can. Just the best that you can feel right now. And if taking a nap's the best that you can feel, do it. Whatever it is, do it. Follow that thing that feels the best. Feels counterintuitive to a lot of you because you've been trained. You've got a lot of marbles in your bag. There is no gain without pain. If it doesn't hurt, you're not making any progress. Who made you the creator of your own reality? 
The world does not revolve around you. So many things, so many bogus flawed premises have been fed to you by people who didn't know, who thought they needed to control your behavior so that they could feel good. And you became an enabler to help them to try to control their experiences. But isn't this true? First chance you got when you got off away from them, did you do what you knew they wanted you to do or did you do what you wanted to do? It depends on how conditioned you became, how much you calibrated to their idea of who you should be and how much you're calibrating to source's idea or knowledge of who you are. Oh, that was good. Ah, I wonder what my inner being thinks about this. You're only powerless because you're depriving yourself of it. wonder how my inner being feels about this. And you know for sure, if you feel defeated, your inner being feels the opposite. If you're blaming someone, your inner being is feeling love. If you feel deprived, your inner being is feeling your abundance. Because it's two ends of the stick. That's why this calibration should not be a difficult thing to do. But it takes some explaining to so many who have been conditioned to believe that you are not good, that you are not perfect, that you are not creator, that you are not blessed. How many times do humans hear that you were born sinners? Really? Who makes this stuff up? Someone who needs you to behave differently for their benefit. Self-interest is a real thing. Self-interest is a real thing. And if we can convince you that your greatest self-interest is to be yourself, to be the lover that you are born to be, to live the prosperity that you were born to live and the clarity and the vitality and the flexibility and the fun. And once you start calibrating to that, it doesn't take very much of you deliberately focusing and affecting your point of attraction and then seeing the results of it before you can come to the conclusion that you are blessed. And here's why we are so sure of this. Most people offer most of their output, their focus, vibration, energy, whatever you want to call that. They offer most of it as a result of what they are observing. So doesn't it follow that if you can deliberately drop some marbles in your bag so that you are deliberately activating your point of attraction and then you get to witness what the law of attraction does in response to that now isn't that habit of observation going to serve you that's why the better it gets the better it gets the better it gets the better it gets but you got to start out there with some real point of understanding your own guidance system and that's really what your guidance system is doing all the time. Your inner being is not saying, oh, no, 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 no. We've been telling you and you haven't been listening and so now you're on your own. Your inner being never says, you have to live with the consequences of your foolishness. Your inner being never, ever stops giving you the information that matches who you really are and what you're most asking for. The other day, Esther was talking to someone on the phone who is in the middle of some strong negative attraction. And Esther was saying, it's okay. Sometimes it's just like that. Don't beat up on yourself. Just don't keep telling these stories to people because that's just perpetuating it. And then it went on a little, little while longer and Esther sort of found herself being repetitive. And she said, it must just feel terrible to have somebody talking to you when you feel so engulfed in something so big and somebody else is trying to make it light and fluffy and like it doesn't really matter. But I really am just trying to make it light and fluffy like it doesn't really matter. But I know you can't hear it. When you're in a position where you can't hear it, don't be mad at yourself because you can't hear it. Say things to yourself like, law of attraction is the real deal. And I've got some momentum going here. And I worked hard for this momentum and I'm not making this stuff up and I don't want that. In other words, we're not asking you to not face reality. We're asking you to choose a reality that you prefer. And you cannot choose a reality that you prefer while you're defending the reality that you've got that you don't like. You've got to do something different and talking to other people when you're in a jam and you talk to other people. Esther remembers not too long after Jerry made his transition and Esther went to Australia with a very small 
crew to do a seminar for Hay House. And Esther thought, ooh, wouldn't it be fun if we did a helicopter ride? Because Esther had done it before. So she spent some time online looking for the best helicopter and the longest ride that went the most places. And it cost the most money, way the most money. But Esther knew what she wanted, and so she booked it. So they got over there, and they got in the helicopter, and off they went, and they had headphones on so that they could hear each other, and they could hear what the pilot was saying, and they could hear what was being said from outside to the pilot. And it was just way, 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 way fun. And Esther knew this was to be a 90-minute ride, and it was so going to be worth it, because that 90 minutes would take them to that place that Esther really wanted them to see. And then she had the feeling that the helicopter was turning around in the sky, a great big... Nestor said, are we going back? No answer. Why have we turned around? No answer. Are we at the halfway point? No answer. And Nestor thought, I know you can hear me. Because <laughs> I can hear you and everybody else, I can hear you. So he took them back and landed. 20 minutes shy of what Esther's expectations were. Now, everybody that had been with her had the time of their life. They loved what they saw. They loved how fun it was. It was the nicest helicopter Esther had ever been in. It was the most wonderful experience for all of them. Not for Esther. <laughs> Not for Esther. And here's the part that we really wanted you to hear. Esther was mad at her friends that didn't defend her. Why are you being so bright and shiny when we have been robbed of 20 minutes of pleasure? Don't you understand that something has gone terribly wrong here? Esther just couldn't let it go. Just kept dropping little things. Not one of them picked it up. Not one of them. It's like they've been listening to Abraham. <laughs> and like Esther hadn't been. And so we know you feel the way you feel about things. In other words, Esther's justification was, well, I'm more invested. And it was my thousands of dollars that were spent. And it was me that spent the afternoon choosing this. Her expectation was stronger for what she wanted. So her disappointment was stronger when it didn't happen. But that's the thing that you have to figure out how to let go of. If you are justifying your disappointments, even when you're right, Esther was so right. That was so wrong. And that guy... That rat bastard guy, <laughs> he did not offer one word of explanation because he knew he didn't have any legitimate explanation. There wasn't a hurricane coming. He had a full tank of whatever it is. He just saw all he wanted to see and he wanted to go home. At least that's what Esther decided it was. You get what we're talking about here? So here's the thing. You can't be the stage manager or the law of attraction manager. Yeah. But what you can do is you can stand in your power and you can put easy existing matches into your bag of marbles. This is the bottom line of what you're all reaching for. You can, by understanding and focusing, you can clarify your bag of marbles, harmonize it with the power that is really you. You cannot get it wrong, and you never get it done. And the reason you can't get it wrong is because you never get it done. And now, don't you just want to go out and put deliberate marbles in your bag and see what happens? Not to control others, but to control your point of attraction so that the universe can demonstrate to you how blessed you are, how seen you are, how powerful you are. Yeah. Really good conversation. We would like to proclaim this as the best conversation we've ever had. The best conversation we've ever had.